Hello and welcome to Release Date Rewind. My name is Mark J. Parker and I am a film lover, filmmaker, film celebrator. And normally this is an audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts on your favorite apps. But thanks to Portland Media Center, you are about to watch the video component of this show where I celebrate movie anniversaries with my friends. Each month, I usually talk about two different movies that I love with different friends. And we talk about the making of the movies, trivia, any fun memories associated with them. So I hope you enjoy because now it's time to rewind. All right, everybody, it is a milestone episode for this podcast that celebrates milestone anniversaries. It's my 50th episode, so it's only fitting to go back to the start with a guest who was in my first episode talking about a Hitchcock movie. Everybody, welcome back, Jeff Bogaiski. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is the 50th? This wow. is the 50th episode. Yep, I know. Isn't that crazy? Because as you remember, but way back in the day when you were my very first guest, Jeff, we would talk about two movies in one. But it was a, it oh, was yeah. a little it was a little like um too fast and like I just thought, you know what? Let me let it breathe a bit. We'll just talk about one movie, you know, each time. Still two movies a month, which we'll see. I mean, sometimes it's I'm, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so exhausted. I can't do another episode. But you know, this way we at least let the movies breathe and, you know, we have more time together. But uh, yeah, you're back. And of course, listeners, if you just listened to our last one, all about wild things, mm -hmm. Jeff was in that one as well. Such a fun episode. Thank you for that. And honestly, our discussion mm -hmm. of wild things made me want to watch it yet again. Like it was so much fun for me. So thank you. Exactly. I know. I, um, I, I, can't do it though. Tariq won't let me. I, I don't think he'll let me watch it unless it's like another year from now. Yeah, he's like he's like, please, God, spread them out, space it out. But I I don't. It's rare when after I talk about a movie or something for the show. I mean, obviously, I love them all, but it's rare for mm. me to like want to dive back in so quickly. But something about that one, I don't know. I'm just like letting my freak flag fly, and I just want to jump back into it, like watch with the deleted scenes because I know that's like in a. 4k blu-ray or something out there so anyway right. so if you haven't listened check out our wild things discussion that was last week but now we are getting into the birds but before the birds before we rewind back to 1963 jeff we were when you were last here last week you were getting ready to do the half marathon you did mm -hmm. it congrats I did it. yes thank you tell us okay. how was it how did was it painful was it horrible was it amazing tell me everything um yeah i'll tell you some brief stories yeah like it was very cold it's probably the coldest race or uh, coldest i've ever run by choice you oh, know God. uh yeah. it was probably like 30 degrees it was you know of course it was in, started in brooklyn yeah. um and but the one thing of course i'm very excited you know I, I got to i got there on time and everything but what happened is after I had my whole playlist ready to go. First song was Ready For It by Taylor Swift. Nice. And immediately <laughs> after that song played, I heard my earbuds died. So oh. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I, I'm going to do 12 miles with no music. Mm, oh my you know. God. So I did freak out a little bit, but it's funny. I, you you realize once you're in that moment with everybody around and you're and you're seeing all the sights, you don't really need music. So yeah, I, yeah, I chilled out. I, I I got through it. Um, but I saw like I heard one guy. He like ran by me and he had his you know phone on his arm and the it blew. I'm like, well, I can do that too, right? Yeah, nobody's gonna be upset unless they have the same pace as me. So right. Um, but yeah, I finished. Um, I was what I did it in two hours and one minute, which was oh. quicker than four years ago. Yeah, so, good for you because you were saying you thought you were gonna be slower be, than the last time you ran. Exactly, I you thought it was like oh. Yeah. Because what was your so, previous time? Do you remember? Two two hours and six minutes. Oh wow! You beat yeah. it just by about five <laughs> minutes. Oh my gosh! Good for you. Because yeah, I know you so, were saying you weren't really like training too hard, right? Like you kind of were. Yeah, I was kind of half 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 
ass in it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I give it a better term. Um, but no, it was a great day. And then we came home and uh, oh, the kids, Tariq and the kids were there to cheer me yes, on. Yes, that video and... is so much fun. I love that. And now I, now I understand the ear, the AirPod thing because I feel like in the video, you're like, here, take them. Take them. Take them. <laughs> I don't need them. And I didn't want to take them out because I'm like, oh, of course, I'll lose them. You know, like, right, it's like, right. Just thinking about all the things that could go wrong. But um, no, the best part about the race was actually running on the Manhattan Bridge and then running uh, through oh, Times yeah. Square. That was really oh, cool. Fun. Oh, yeah. that's got to be yeah. so cool. And you know, one benefit of not having music playing in your ears is it was probably cool hearing, you know, the crowds along the way, like cheering for you, right? Yeah, no, that was definitely, I could, I would probably do that again. I, yeah. you know, I just know running by yourself, I think is, is terrible without music, but yes. with in a race like that, I think it's, uh, yeah. it, was, it was perfect. Actually, oh, so. That's so funny. I know yeah. I have one of those um, for my AirPods and my phone. I have like, um, I don't even know what it's called, but I got it a mm -hmm. long time ago. Like, mm -hmm. it's like th something where you just rest your phone on it. You don't have to plug it in, mm -hmm. but I learned the hard way a few times. You got to really make sure it's charging because sometimes when you just put it on it, it's right. not like syncing correctly. Right, so, right. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, I don't want everyone to think that I was uh, not prepared. I actually, they were charged, but it was cold. It, oh. was, it was so cold that they wow. went dead. Because when I got home, I was like, let me just, you know, how you next to your phone, it shows you how much energy they, or power they have. And it was yep. at 75% or 90%. So oh, I think it was just Oh, my cold. gosh. It just was so cold. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's like yeah. when it's so hot yeah. in the sun in the summer, your phone's like, right. um, take um, this yeah. phone out of the sun or it's going to explode, right? <laughs> right. It wow. is too hot. Now, what did you do yeah. after the half marathon? Did you like have a big meal? We came home and opened up uh, two bottles of champagne and nice. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Then, and very fitting for wild nap. things. So there you go. You're, yeah. You're that... keeping the champagne <laughs> theme going. Good, good. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, great, but, yeah, we kept our clothes on, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, the, se the sequel is a little less, you know, uh, yeah. you know, explicit. You know, they're all older now. So. <laughs> But no, that's so oh, awesome, goodness. Jeff. Good for you. And I'm so happy yeah. the kids got to see you and cheer you on. I'm sure they were so excited, right? I hope. Yeah, they're like, what is, what is Baba doing? What is he? They call me, they call me Baba. So yeah. like, what is Baba? Why is Baba? Baba, you're winning. I'm like, yes, I'm winning. I'm winning uh, the race. Oh, I it's love cute. it. Good for yeah. you. Well, that's awesome. Mm. Well, I wanted, I definitely wanted to check in with you on that because, you know, yeah. it was kind of like a cliffhanger. Last time it was like, <laughs> like pre will he survive? <laughs> yes. Will he actually be back for the next episode? We will see. And he's here. He made it. Now let's rewind. Let's ignore mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. cool stuff we're doing today. Let's mm -hmm. go back a long time ago before you and I were born. Exactly. Let's go back to 1963, 60 years ago, the 60th anniversary of the birds. Wow. March 28th, a little springtime horror thriller i always not like a nice springtime horror we were just talking about scream six and you know it's always fun right. when you got a good um thrill in uh, as the start of spring as things are heating up so let me set the scene for you jeff i'm going to tell you just a few quick little yep. things what was going on at this time some fun facts on the news side jfk was our president our youngest u.s president and then of course sadly he was assassinated later this year so he wasn't our president mm -hmm. for long on the music side walk like a man by the four seasons was the number one song i thought that was funny <laughs> My gosh. Walk like a man. A man. <laughs> right? frankie valley on the tv side the jetsons had just come to an end it, i guess it was just like a one season wonder on abc mm -hmm. but later it was revived in the 80s for a few seasons but it had just come to an end and i thought this was kind of fun it was the first program in color on abc I guess oh, wow. a lot of stations still could not air in color. So this was mm -hmm. the first one. So that had just come to an end. And get this, General Hospital was about to premiere on TV, April 1st, 1963. Oh, and I don't know, is wow. it still, I think it's still on. Am I right? Do you know? I don't, I don't know. I think that what, that was one of those I never, I was, we were a all my children family. So we yes. didn't, yeah. Uh -huh. we don't... All my children was a big one. General Hospital, mm -hmm. I feel like it's still on, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll delete this if I'm wrong because I don't want any haters out there going after me. You know, the soap, the soap fans, if they hear a title whisper in the wind, they're like, I, I, I have to be very careful. They're so, like Swifties. They, they're, have to, they have to be correct yes, all the time. They were the original Swifties. They're the general Hospies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the movie side, uh, of course, yeah. The Birds was a big hit, very popular. But before that, another popular movie that came out just a few weeks prior was How the West Was Won. That was a big deal oh. at this time. Never saw it, but I know, mm -mm. you know, I know yeah, the title. 
<laughs> but so, Jeff, I'm going to throw it over to you. Tell me in your own words, mm -hmm. for anyone out there who doesn't know what The Birds is about, I'm, it's pretty self-explanatory, but give me your own little short, you know, synopsis, a little summary of The Birds. What is it about? Well, The Birds is about a woman named Melanie Daniels who has uh, no job, right? Mm -hmm. She's like this, like, not debutante, what do you call her? Um, She's like, like a socialite. A she, socialite she made me feel yeah. like kind of like a, a, a 60s Paris Hilton or something. Right, like right. Right. Yeah, so she she meets uh she meets a gentleman at a pet store and um she kind of, you know, feels all the feels for him and basically chases him to where he lives, finds out where he lives, drives down the south, you know, coast to find him and to deliver these love birds and, you know, we think she's going she thinks she's going to have a nice little rendezvous with him. But oh, yeah. um well, does she know that there are these birds <laughs> that are about to just come slamming down on Bodega Bay? <laughs> oh, my right. God. And they do you know? slam. They're banging into right. things, poking their heads and things. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You know, so, yeah, it's about uh, her and her, her interactions with, what is his name, Mitch? Yeah, Mitch. Mitch. Mm -hmm. Mitch. Which he looks um, like such a Mitch. He's like the yeah. iconic Mitch, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and his family, you know, they're around. And basically, yeah, yeah they're just getting wham bam thank you ma'am to buy these birds everywhere Seriously. they go and this you was know? not the wham bam thank you ma'am that melanie wanted <laughs> she was going for a different kind of adventure here you know it's so funny yeah. because i hadn't rewatched this in quite a while it's been a long time mm -hmm. um although of course this movie just lingers in mind for most people right that's so memorable sure. but mm -hmm. i completely forgot yeah she's going after this guy like she wants him bad but like why do you think because at first I'm like, man, this girl must just not be happy with any of the guys in her life. She sees Mitch. She wants him right away. She's got to follow him two hours north. She's looking around. <laughs> She's going to the store. Do you know Mitch? Where is this guy right. Mitch? You know, like, I need that D she basically wants. But yeah. then I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, is it also like a, a bit of like a, a, a bit of a guilt thing? Because as we know, when she first meets him in, in that pet store, mm -hmm. um, he does, we, we learn that like he met her in, or he didn't meet her, but he saw her in court. He's right. a lawyer, right? He mm -hmm. saw her right. in court and she's she's gotten in trouble doing different things. She's in the gossip, you know, mm -hmm. magazines or newspapers, page you know, mm -hmm. page six, totally mm -hmm. like doing bad stuff. I guess she did a prank and broke something and he thinks she should be behind bars. So <laughs> do you think, Jeff, on this latest rewatch when you saw it, do you feel like, she is also driving to Bodega Bay to kind of like, not only because she likes him, but mm -hmm. because she kind of wants to like do good. She knows that like he actually thinks what she did was bad, whatever it was. We don't know the details, some prank, you know, does she kind of want to make it up to him and kind of let him know that she actually does have a conscience? Or am I reading too much into it? And it's I not think, that deep. I think, yeah, you might be. Yeah, I never thought about it I, and never thought about that. Like I it's kind of like a, like she's redeeming herself kind of thing exactly yeah is it a redemption thing um, she wants to like because because especially once she's there she really you know she she remembers that he wants to get these lovebirds right um, which i never knew lovebirds are green or are uh, lovebirds any yeah. birds uh, yeah, I, they, there's I, different colors. Yeah, I actually oh, had okay. love, a lovebird. Grow, I had one lovebird growing up, which you're not supposed to have just one, but that's a long story. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, my gosh. Be careful. I'm worried about you. I don't want some, cur some bird curse. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny of course i love that you had a love bird oh this gosh. is this makes this guest appearance even well, more special I, I mean i the thing is i don't have a ticket stub because i wasn't alive oh, when uh i wasn't right. alive when the, that movie came out so at least i have yes i have a definite uh feeling for this movie yes because of the oh my god yeah but, i forgot yeah i was hoping you would show me your, your <laughs> ticket stub but that's not possible you'd have to like, show I'm, like a parent's <laughs> stub or like you know something right i'm yeah. 75 years old I yeah actually you. yeah <laughs> take off the mask yeah <laughs> i never thought about that that's a, it could yeah. be it's a new like thing it. that I literally thought of today. I'm like, is she going up there? Cause she, cause she knows that he wants to get these lovebirds for his sister, which Jeff, we need to talk about. He has an 11 year old <laughs> sister. <laughs> Seems well, like his parents, uh, you know, had a little surprise. Right. Maybe. <laughs> right. 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 Well, I love the fact that I, I probably saw alien before mm -hmm. I saw um the birds yeah and i remember watching the birds i think i don't i cannot tell you when i saw them, this movie for the first time probably yeah. in college or something but i remember i'm like oh my god is that 
No, is that the woman from Aliens or Flight of the Navigator? And I, of course, like, do you remember oh, that movie? You remember Flight of the Navigator? I don't know if I've seen it's... Flight of the Navigator. Who else is in that? Oh, um, I think Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, is in it. no, I haven't seen that. I've heard of it. I know the oh title. My gosh. Mar- oh. it's, it was one of those 80s movies that, like, just resonated with me. So it's sci-fi. It's, like, a little bit E.T.-ish, you know? Okay, yeah. Um, but she was she was in that movie. So it's, okay. I'm like, this girl's face is so... Yes, she has I, such a memorable face, right? Yeah, Those I wasn't eyes. gonna say it's not iconic. It's not an iconic face, but like <laughs> well, just uh... <laughs> it could be. I mean, uh, it's funny. I don't know her from Flight of the Navigator, but of course, mm-hmm. I know her from Alien, like you, and I know mm-hmm. her from The Witches of Eastwick. She's really screaming oh. and crying. In oh, the that's Witches right. Of Eastwick. Oh, yeah. yeah, she's more yeah. supporting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah she's but... she's got some good horror sci-fi cred for sure. Mm-hmm. Veronica Cartwright. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's fun to see her as a kid. Her face yeah has looked the same it's amazing it's those teeth it's the teeth <laughs> yes <laughs> and maybe also because in so many of these famous movies she's been in she's crying and screaming yeah. that it's like she's yeah, always a, a crazy she's always playing yeah yes. like a, a slightly a, unhinged insane, right unhinged perfect yes mm-hmm. uh-huh absolutely <laughs> yeah so that's his little sister kathy but the but people think it's alice it's what did, what did i write the the shop owner's mm. like uh, her i'm pretty sure her name's alice and then it's like no it's like lisa or something and right. then, no it's kathy uh oh no <laughs> lois alice or lois and then kathy so there yeah. you go but um yeah i'm like okay you have an 11 year old sister that is a twist that we did not really get much backstory about but okay i'll let right. it slide you know because well, rod jessica taylor T- jessica tandy right Jessica Tandy, absolutely. Driving Miss Daisy is Lydia, the mom, who's got mm. such an icy oh. glare. Oh, my gosh. We're going to talk about all of the stares in this movie because so many uh, people are I just, they are just acting with their eyes. Tyra Banks would be so proud. They are smizing. They are glaring. They are <laughs> all sorts of things. But, um, but yeah, Rod Taylor plays Mitch. Yeah. And I looked up his and uh, Tippi Hedren's ages, and they were both 33, which uh, I just feel like that's kind of, always rare when the leads are the same age but i'm like wow that guy's 33 and you know we were just talking about how matt matt dylan was around 33 when he made wild things and i'm like he doesn't he seems older to me uh sorry but rod taylor definitely seems older than 33 what do you think oh yeah i thought he he's he could be pushing like 45 like yes he's like he had some gray hair i would have thought he was 50 totally i mean nowadays yeah that guy would be you know a, a quite quite a hot dilf at like 50 with it with yeah, grays yeah. i mean you know the ruggedness so it's just funny i mean 60 years ago 33 just just hit different <laughs> um, but no very handsome guy <laughs> how do you do my name is alfred hitchcock and i would like to tell you about our good friends the birds <laughs> That's the damnest thing I ever saw. Birds just don't go around attacking people without no reason. Yes, they attack the children. Attack them. What's the matter with all the birds? Let me now mm-hmm. just kind of tell you where th- some of these stars and, and people were in the, the beginnings of this film. And feel free, mm-hmm. Jeff, to, to shout out because I'm sure you know some of this stuff as well. So... Mm-hmm. In case anyone doesn't know, this is based on the short story, The Birds, by Daphne du Maurier, I believe is her last name. Is that how you pronounce it? That, that sounds nice. Uh, it has a nice thing to it. I think that's it. Maurier, yeah. I think, or Maurier. I don't know, but Daphne. We'll just call her Daphne because not enough people are named Daphne. Um, <laughs> so she wrote a short story. It was published in 1952. So about, what is that? 11 years prior to the movie coming out. So mm-hmm. it's interesting. And I don't know if you ever had ever heard this, Jeff, but I know they mm. were thinking about doing a remake, of course, which... Even though this movie is so good, I'd be open to a remake. I don't know. I think well, it could be something. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, well, it's just, well, it, you're talking about the remake. You heard about uh, the oh, yeah. new Vertigo, right? With yes. uh, Robert Downey Jr. New and it's Vertigo. Like, mm-hmm. You know, and I have to say, like, I, my my thing about redoing Hitchcock, it's, you know, I always go back mm-hmm. to Psycho because they, they tried that, you know. I know, and, which that turns 25 later this year. That was in 98 as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That was, yeah. um, I saw that in the theater too. Um, yeah. So it's tough. It's, it's tough, right? Like, if, if if they're gonna do it, they have to. They should not do a shot by shot remake. That I think that was like no, that's you know that, that was that was not a good, great choice. Yeah. Um, 
I it could be fun. I, I'm actually. It, it's hard. I don't know because I, I saw Vertigo long, long ago. You know, I think I actually saw it for the first and only time at an mm -hmm. outdoor screen in like Central Park years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. And though I love seeing movies in a park, you know, but mm -hmm. I feel like you can't see a movie for the first time in the park. So I kind of am a little, my memory's a little foggy with Vertigo, which I know is terrible. I really need to watch it for real. So I yeah. don't know enough. I, I can't make a, a strong enough kind of decision about this, but it does feel a little weird to me like robert downey jr do you think that's good casting i don't know who else i would i i haven't really thought about who could fill fill yeah. that role i mean yeah he's i haven't seen him honestly because i don't watch marvel stuff so i haven't right. seen him and i only like, really done that and so iron man yeah. things right uh -huh. but yeah i don't know and and jeff did you mm -hmm. see speaking of remakes and speaking of daphne she also wrote the story rebecca which alfred hitchcock mm -hmm. did you know, about 20 something years before this. Did you see the Rebecca remake on Netflix with Army Hammer? I thought that was pretty decent. What do you think? No, you didn't like uh, it? Okay. No, I didn't actually. I, oh, no, I didn't see it. I, I think, um, oh, was that, did that come out during the cannibalism stuff? Or I don't rem <laughs> remember. <laughs> I know the cannibalism era. <laughs> um, Oh, yikes. <laughs> that came out like right before it. I think if I remember correctly, I feel like that came out. That was like his last movie before the news broke, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I remember at least watching it and not being creeped out by him. So gotcha. I don't think it was yeah. out just yet. Yeah. But I remember mm -hmm. it looked very nice. I mean, it was a, a, a nice update, at least visually, than the 1940 Hitchcock version, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I, I totally know what you mean. Redoing, remaking Hitchcock is tricky, but something about the birds, I don't know. I could be open to it because what I was uh, saying was, I don't know if you had heard this. This has been in the, in the works for a long time. It's been rumored and buzzed about, but I feel like Naomi Watts, who's like the horror remake queen, she right. um was attached to a remake of the birds that was more closely aligned with the short story. Because the mm. short story, I've never read it. Have you read it? I haven't read it, no. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I'd like to read it sometime and maybe get it mm -hmm. at my local library. But um, <laughs> it's set in the UK. It's in Cornwall, where mm -hmm. Daphne was from, uh, mm -hmm. shortly after the Second World War. So different time period. It's on a farm, more rural. Uh, same, Of course, same sort of thing. Just lethal mm -hmm. attacks from birds at random. No clear motive. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, no clear reason. So, right. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think because because obviously, I mean, what works so well in Hitchcock's uh, version of the of the story is, I mean, we're in San Francisco, then we're in this bodega bay. So we get some city, we get some beautiful coastal, you know, it's all very California. <laughs> right. So it would be interesting right. to see a version that's maybe a little closer to the original uh, vision of, of it being in Britain. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm open to seeing this again. I don't think it would be like sacrilegious like psycho was such a risk i feel like the birds remake if they ever do one is a little bit you know less risky yeah because it's I, psycho was i mean if we're talking hitchcock i think most people would say psycho is probably like their number one on the yeah, list right, right? Mm -hmm. um yeah. so this one's kind of like maybe two th two or three it's yeah i think it's worth trying yeah. I, do, I do think it's worth trying. I'm right. curious. I just hope if, if you do, they don't. One of the things I love, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a bit, but like, I love the fact that there is no explanation and I hope that mm. they keep that, you know, that there's okay. no, okay. we don't know so why you, they're attacking. You oh, I, like just, I don't no want, you know, I like, I love the ambiguity. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tell you a little <laughs> later. Um, I thought I saw an interesting fun fact and maybe you did too about Hitchcock wanting specifically wanting it to be ambiguous. So I guess they maybe had mm -hmm. more of a, uh, decision on why it was happening, but he wanted to cut it. Yeah. You know, I don't, I certainly don't mind the ambiguity. I do kind of wish, cause I love, and I know we're jumping around a little bit, but and we'll talk more about it mm -hmm. in a bit, but I really do mm -hmm. love the scene in the diner, in the restaurant where they're all talking and they're all trying to figure it out. And you know, the cops there. And, and that's of course the hysterical mother is there with her kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just mm -hmm. such a great scene. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of the mist from, you know, however Same. many years ago exactly. that was right. Mm -hmm. It's very similar, mm -hmm. but I do love all the kind of calm hysteria and all these theories and like all that stuff that I do kind of wish because no one I, I was watching that part closely rewatching it this time. No one mm -hmm. really has any clear hunch 
on what's going on with the birds. I know the older woman says, you know, oh, a year ago or something like, you know, some time ago, birds got lost in the fog and then we're just attacking homes for just right. a day. And then, they, you know, so there was that. But I kind of right. wanted just someone, I don't know, maybe it's very 80s. I wanted someone to be like, <laughs> well, you know, like a couple towns over there was that toxic spill or something. You know? but, <laughs> right. But right. maybe I'm just getting, maybe that's like a good 20 years later or something. You know, that would be mm -hmm. mentioned, you know. So, yeah, I think a little hint of something I would have gotten a kick out of if there was just a some hunch that I heard. But, yeah, I mean, it's super, super spooky how these birds just strike at random and then they have these lulls where they're just around but right. not doing anything like it's this weird kind of timer or something that goes off you know yeah well i i, I kept i think during this viewing i was like i thought to myself is this only happening in bodega bay like is this like a are they doing it in other towns or would they have heard like a newscast or something about it oh, right because yeah, it just seems like yeah you know like a like a like a bird blitz everywhere you know i don't know yep. is it super centralized or is it all over because mm -hmm. apparently at the end of the short story it becomes clear that it's all over the country so oh, yeah that's that's mm -hmm. a little bit more obvious here we're really not sure yeah but so of yeah. course so this movie's inspired by the short story and also i thought this was really interesting jeff you probably saw this it's also partly mm -hmm. inspired by mm -hmm. a real mass bird attack that happened on a seaside town in california in 1961 august 1961 so very you know soon before this film came out this really did happen in california i thought that was wild oh my gosh i yeah. don't think i knew that i did not know that yeah mm -hmm. it's a, it was in a seaside town of capitola california mm -hmm. and residents awoke to a scene that seemed straight out of a horror movie hordes of <laughs> seabirds were dive bombing their homes <laughs> crashing into cars and spewing half digested anchovies onto lawns now that is terrifying that's pretty nasty <laughs> we well, didn't get I, no I anchovies <laughs> It is about the birds and their age-long relationship with man. It will be seen in theaters like this across the country. In my lecture, I hope to make you all aware of our good friends, the birds. I mean, I don't love pigeons and birds, you know, and the, the wings flapping always, you know, and I'm the kind mm -hmm. of guy where like always when a bird is like flying overhead, I always like duck, you know, even if it's actually <laughs> like a good 20 feet. I'm always like, Ugh, you know, so. Right. Oh, yeah. And maybe this movie did that to us, you know, because I, I was going to say it's it might yeah, be this, you, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, because mm -hmm. Psycho, we, you didn't, you don't have to see Psycho to know the scariest, craziest twist, you know, the shower. So you don't really have right. had, you haven't had to really see the birds to obviously just see a quick shot. And you're like, oh, no, I get it. I understand yeah. what's going on here. You know, yeah. all the all the wings flapping. So yeah. well, we won't we won't do any sound effects. <laughs> um, and apparently the cause for that, it did come out later. It wasn't known back in the 60s, but I mm -hmm. guess years later they realized the cause for the bird's behavior in capitola california was toxic algae that's what i mean about the toxic oh sludge or yeah. whatever so i guess the birds were eating something and it went to their brains made, and like yeah. cocaine bear you know again, <laughs> exactly. everything goes back to cocaine bear you're so right what a great <laughs> yeah what a great connection to cocaine bear yeah maybe the birds got into some californian uh drug company <laughs> And yeah, oh, I see. I could see that. I could see that in a post credit scene. There you go. After the credits, mm -hmm. we realize, you know, it's kind of like Contagion. Remember Contagion? Right. So oh good. at God. the yeah. very end, so it goes in reverse and then the bat and all that. And, you know, COVID. All comes uh, back to Gwyneth. <laughs> yes, always goes back to Gwyneth, which, I mean, we got to, speaking of, wow, she's having a moment. <laughs> Can we talk? We have, this will be extra, right? This trial. <laughs> this is a bonus. like, I can't. <laughs> It. It's the funniest oh thing I've seen. I just, I can't stop watching it. Thanks so much for watching. Next week will be part two of this discussion. And in the meantime, please follow Release Date Rewind on Instagram. Bye.